Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here in the overflow room with Dave's faves. And today I want to talk to you about Bartok's piano concertos. Now, there have been many, many fine recordings of Bartok's piano concertos, and I've discussed them in other videos, of course. But of course, I also have a personal favorite. And my personal favorite may surprise you. It is this one, Yefim Bromfman with Esapekka Salonen on Sony. Now, the the supposed reference recordings for the Bartok Piano Concertos are Free Choi with Geza Anda on Deutsche Gramophone, and more recently Zoltan Kochis with Ivan Fischer on well, it used to be Phillips, but now it's Decca, and it may have been Eloquence. It's sort of, it's sort of bopped around a little bit. But here's why I picked this one. The reason is really pretty simple. I love the Bartok Piano Concerti. I really do. I mean, there's that famous recording also of Polini doing numbers one and two with Abato in Chicago. There was Alexis Weissenberg with number two with Ormandy and RCA. Many, many fine recordings. Andy Fisher doing number three. Just, just like lots of them. They're great works. Just unbelievably great works. However, however, in my peregrinations through the the record collecting world, the the Fritjoy and Anda and the Cautious Fisher, they were not they weren't available all the time. They just weren't. And as my record collection sort of turned and churned. Sometimes I had them and sometimes I didn't, particularly when I got rid of LPs and was waiting for CDs to come out. And or they showed up, they were in a big box or something. And so I wanted a recording of the Bartok Piano Concertos that I could just reach for because that's what Dave's faves are. You know, they're the ones that are just the, the performances that I are wonderful, first of all, I think are wonderful, that I reach for when I want to hear them. Of course, now this one is in a box too, the Saladin box or maybe a Bronfman box somewhere. I don't know. But at the time, at the time, you could see, you could see, see the little hole punch here? See that little hole punch? That means it was a promotional copy. Back in the heyday, you don't really get promotional copies like this anymore because the labels don't promote anything. They don't care, especially serious classical titles like this. I mean, the idea that they would be sending out perhaps hundreds of copies to many, many critics at newspapers and magazines. Remember magazines? Uh, you know, they, they just they just don't do it. And so you wind up either having to get digital downloads or you do what I do, which is simply buy your own on your own dime, which is perfectly fine. I mean, I actually prefer it that way because from a from an ethical standpoint, it's actually cleaner and purer than to take free merchandise. Uh, but, you know, also back in those days, the labels were a little bit more sane because they knew that if somebody didn't like something, there were another hundred critics out there who probably would. And there were always, unfortunately, critics out there who you could count on to give you a good review if, they gave, if you gave them a free CD, which I think is, is just terrible. Absolutely terrible. I mean, I was blacklisted by several labels in my heyday for being honest. But, you know, that, that's the way it goes. You, you, you still have to be honest. And if you want to still do your job, then you've got to find alternate means of doing it, of getting the stuff that you need to listen to, however it works. And one of the reasons I think eventually, um, at least I personally was able to achieve a truce with most of these people, is that they knew that if they didn't want to give me the product, it didn't matter. I was going to buy it and listen to it and review it anyway. So most of them just said, oh, what the hell, we'll send it to them. And some of them said, we won't. And that's the way it worked. That was the way it worked. But this was available. It was available. It's a fabulous disc. It sounds great. Salonen is is a master at this sort of contemporary repertoire, I, you know, with the, the, the clarity and incisiveness and rhythm. And he has the LA Philharmonic playing fantastically. And Bronfman, Bronfman is one of those wonderful pianists who gets consistently underrated. He's a great great musician. I mean, his, his, his Beethoven piano concerti with, with Zinman are arguably, you know, the best modern, 
modern series of performances, particularly with accompaniments in a period instrument -y sort of style. His Prokofiev with Zubin Mehta in Israel was just marvelous. And now we have this, the Bartok Piano Concerti. And they're a wonderful, they're a wonderful overview of Bartok's career. They really are, because the first is a more experimental kind of piece. It's interested in his handling of the piano as a percussive instrument. And the second is the one that gets played most often. It's in beautifully structured arch form. It's the formal masterpiece with every movement somewhat differently differently structured and, and organized, but you have a perfect A, B, C, B, A form because the second movement encloses the central scherzo, and it's one of those spooky, spooky nocturne things for, for deliberately indicated non-vibrato strings and, and timpani in the middle and then a little quicky scherzo thingy in the middle. And, and then the finale takes the themes from the first movement, which is just for piano and wind instruments, no strings at all, and and uses them as episodes in the rondo, just like in George Gershwin's Piano Concerto in F, which was written earlier. I've pointed out in my talk on that piece. But so it was a question of convenience. It really was. And, and because this was so convenient, I listened to it more frequently and grew to love it as much as those other theoretically more famous and perhaps more Hungarian-ish. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really think it matters in this particular case. But those also exceptional, wonderful idiomatic performances. I mean, there was also Ashkenazi, who was terrific, was Schulte. I mean, there are really good Bartok piano concerto cycles buzzing around out there, and some more recent ones, too. And of course, Pierre Boulez did them with different soloists. There's, there's, you're spoiled for choice. You really are spoiled for choice. But my favorite version was this one on Sony, Bronfman and Salonen, because I just loved to hear it. And it was available for me to snag out of my collection and listen to. And you know, sometimes, sometimes that's how we find out what our favorite recordings are, because there are so many. There are just so many of everything, uh, too many of everything. And so, you know, the one that we choose among the, the opportunities to indulge in excellence is the one that's simply the one that's there. And this is the one that was there, and it's still here. And I still love it. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.